Thank you for joining us. This webinar is on how to perform a milk challenge to confirm or exclude cow's milk protein allergy. And I will let the presenters introduce themselves. Thank you, Marianne. My name is Alison Booth and I'm a community paediatric dietitian working in Somerset Community for Somerset Partnership NHS Trust. And I'm Heidi Sieber. I'm a paediatric dietitian at Taunton and Somerset NHS Trust. Um, so there are several handouts available for parents. Some of these are particularly relevant to this webinar. So which ones are particularly relevant to the webinar, Alison? So the IMAP milk allergy guideline, which is the initial fact sheet for parents. The IMAP early home reintroduction to confirm the diagnosis of milk allergy and also the IMAP milk ladder and associated recipes. So those are the ones that are much more relevant to this particular presentation and the other two at the bottom there in pink, those can only be available after completing the post webinar survey. So this webinar is all around challenging children who've got a non IG mediated milk allergy or a delayed milk allergy. And it's really important to stress that the home challenge is only appropriate if your child has a non IG mediated allergy. So a delayed reaction with no history of severe or anaphylactic reactions. And it's really important that we do this so that we can either confirm or exclude the diagnosis of a milk allergy for your child. There's, there's no other test, um, unlike the immediate milk allergy. Uh, so we have to remove it from the diet and then reintroduce it. And generally we would do this after between two to four weeks, once your child has been either on a special formula or whether or not you've taken um, cow's milk or cow's milk and soya out of your maternal diet when you're breastfeeding. And generally then we would tolerate, we would challenge them again at around 12 months of age. So it's important that we introduce normal cow's milk formula in the first bottle of the day and generally you would mix that with the hydrolyzed or maybe even an amino acid based formula um, and I'm going to cover that on the following slide. I think it's interesting actually you were saying there are no tests, there are no tests available for non-IG allergy, it really is a case of food removal and then food re reintroduction to confirm the diagnosis, yes, is that correct? Yes that's right and it's actually very difficult because a lot of parents have had a, a very unsettled baby and a baby who's not been sleeping, who's had lots of screaming episodes, very colicky, and they've finally managed to get them settled on a, maybe a milk-free diet or from a maternal point of view or on a special formula. And now we're asking them to challenge again, which is often why some parents are very reluctant, but it is actually very important because otherwise we can't actually confirm that as a diagnosis. Otherwise it could just be coincidence. So when we're, challenging the non-IG mediated reaction. Um, so initially, like I said, after two to four weeks, once your child has been on a special formula or on a maternal milk-free diet. And the way that I would normally recommend you do that, so on the first day, in the morning, generally, you would do this so that you've got the whole day for your baby to develop any symptoms if they're going to. So you'd mix an ounce or 30 mils of normal formula into your first bottle of the day. So you'd mix that with the hydrolyzed formula. So say, for example, you normally make up a six ounce bottle. You would have six ounces of water in the bottle. You would put five scoops of the hydrolyzed formula and one scoop of normal formula in the first bottle of the day only. And then on day two, you would increase that to two scoops of normal formula mixed in with the hydrolyzed formula. Day three, three scoops, etc until your child is having a full bottle of normal formula in the morning and if they were fine and not showing any symptoms then you would swap them over onto the normal formula the following day. So in previous webinars we've talked about the benefits of being on a hydrolyzed formula rather than being on an amino acid based formula so you would do that in exactly the same way and very much if your child shows any kind of symptoms then it would be something that you would stop and uh, you would return to your normal formula. So this is just the copy of the IMAP guidelines and you can see that it's uh, set out for you there on days one to seven and that's assuming you make up a seven ounce bottle. So that's for your information, you can download that. So if your baby symptoms return, important to stop the reintroduction as they are showing signs of a milk allergy and then you would return to being fully milk free 
and it's also quite helpful if you let your GP or your dietitian know and generally your child's symptoms will settle again in another few days and that's where your diagnosis of milk allergy in your child is now confirmed. So the next time that we would challenge with uh, cow's milk is usually around 12 months of age or when they've been um, symptom free on a milk free diet for six months. Home challenge again is only appropriate if your child has the delayed non IgE mediated allergy so with no history of severe or anaphylactic reactions. The other time that you may in, be uh, advised to rechallenge with uh, cow's milk is if your child has accidentally eaten something that has contained cow's milk protein and there has been no reaction at all. Because that often does happen doesn't it somebody like grandma or somebody will give them something that's got some dairy in and, and you'll realise they tolerate it absolutely fine. Absolutely or particularly when they're um, crawling or walking around and, and will grab something that a sibling has got that contains milk. So it is common and if they don't have a reaction to it, it is a sign that we can then re-challenge with dairy to see if that cow's milk allergy has been outgrown. What about the IMAP uh, milk allergy guidelines? We've got those as a downloadable sheet, haven't we? So parents can download that from uh, our website, www.patientwebinars.co.uk, can't they, as one of the handouts, is that correct? Absolutely, and that clearly goes through um, everything that you need to know about re-challenging or reintroducing cow's milk protein into your child. So a really nice, easy sheet for parents to follow, Absolutely, which is step great. By step. Okay, and this is national guidelines, isn't it, that have been produced. Okay, and they also produce a, a great IMAP milk ladder as well, is that correct? Yes, yeah, so th this one talks through how to reintroduce um, cow's milk back into your child's diet, as I say, at around 12 months of age. Um, and it starts with trace amounts of milk protein that's been cooked in something and then gradually moves through to processed uh, milk protein in the form of uh, cheese or yogurt and then finally into fresh milk. And it's important that we do that because we know that some of the milk proteins can be made less allergenic or more easily tolerated once they've been heat processed. So some children can tolerate certain baked forms of milk protein more than they can fresh milk. So it's important okay. to go through that step by step. That's really step. interesting. So basically the heating of the milk itself or the dairy protein has has broken up that protein enough so the body no longer recognises it so readily in some cases. Absolutely. Is that right? Okay, so that's why you start with a very heavily cooked dairy first and then work up slowly to the rawer forms of dairy up the ladder, is that correct? Yeah, so it's important um, to, to follow the IMAP guideline carefully and go through each of the, the stages. If you are breastfeeding your baby, so if your, your child is solely breastfed, again using the IMAP guidelines, you would simply add some cow's milk or cow's milk contains into your own maternal diet and over the course of about a week. And I would suggest you start gradually and then increase until you're on a normal dairy containing diet and note any kind of symptoms in your baby. If there are any symptoms, again, that's where you would stop and go back to being milk free. But if there's no symptoms, there's no reason why you can't continue on a normal diet. Uh, when to challenge with soya? So again, home challenge is only appropriate if your child has non IgE allergy to soya, so no history of severe or anaphylactic reactions. And we go through in one of the earlier webinars, don't we, the difference between the types of allergy. And I think it's really important if people don't understand that to watch the whole series of webinars, because one of them we've got the consultant paediatrician going through exactly what the difference is between IgE and non-IgE allergy. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And similarly to the cow's milk protein, then generally you would challenge with uh, soya once your child has been symptom free on a soy free diet for six months or when they're over 12 months of, of age. And again, um, it's a similar step by step process. If your child has accidentally had something that contains soya protein and has not had any reaction, then again, it's an early indication that you can re-challenge with soya uh, and they may have outgrown their soya allergy. Okay, and if it's unsuccessful, what would you, if they try and challenge and it doesn't work, what would you suggest? So we would generally suggest that for both the milk challenge and the, the soya, that if it's unsuccessful, you would try again in three months time. Okay, that's useful to know. And um, what about how to challenge with soya itself? So, how so it goes through a similar pattern to the IMAP guidelines with milk in that you would start with 
small amounts of soya, so things like soya lecithin that's um, present in um, certain biscuits. Then you would move on to baked soya that's present in certain breads and then gradually would move through to less well-cooked soya and eventually into soy protein in the form of milk. So it's it's getting rawer and rawer as you go Absolutely. up that ladder. Okay, so if you're going to tolerate anything, you're probably going to tolerate those early stages. And it's just a case of seeing whether you can tolerate the whole lot, basically. Yeah. Okay, very useful. So the, the main things to remember is to only challenge if you have non IgE mediated allergy. Uh, challenge one thing at a time. So only challenge milk or soya. Don't change anything else uh, in the diet. It's better if these foods are introduced early in the morning. So you've got all day to see if symptoms develop. And the other thing to say is if you get part way through the ladder and symptoms develop, then anything that you have tolerated in the diet up to the reactions occurring can stay in the diet. That's very useful to know. So don't go right back to square one if you've been no. if you've tolerated the first two or three steps or yep, your child has tolerated stay the in the diet step. and then yeah. you would start from where you left off um, in three months and you would continue that every three to six months until the allergy is outgrown. And that's the same for both dairy and soya. Absolutely. Mm, very useful. And just to reiterate again, there's a, a range of handouts that are related to these webinars. So the IMAP guidelines that we refer to in this presentation um, are available, but the uh, FASG booklets for milk-free diets and milk and soy-free diets are only available once you complete the post-webinar survey. Yeah, and for this particular webinar, you're really looking at the second one, the early home reintroduction to confirm the diagnosis, is that right? Um, and the green one that's got the milk ladder and associated yeah. recipes. Excellent. Um, again, want to really reiterate, as we have with the other webinars, that please, please do uh, fill in that survey. We'd be really, really grateful. Um, and thank you for listening. <laughs>